Hello, and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am here by myself today because Neon is once again busy elsewhere. Um, interestingly enough, we talked about uh, the comic conventions this past week and about how, you know, uh, HBO, look, they're pulling out and uh, Marvel wasn't going to be doing, you know, panels at Hall H, but they were going to be tabling and things like that at San Diego Comic-Con and how conventions aren't doing so hot. And we brought up E3 and things like that. So what we're going to talk about today is the fact that yet another big draw to Hall H is not going to be per participating in the panels at San Diego Comic-Con, as well as there, there might be an issue with E3 coming back. There, they might not be coming back in the next couple of years either. We don't know yet. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. Um, if you do so, I'll give you a woohoo. Woohoo. And um, we're going to talk about this. So... Now, Netflix and Sony are skipping San Diego Comic-Con. The only one that's still staying so far is Paramount Pictures is holding a panel, but they've lost uh, Marvel. Um, they've lost, I believe, uh, was it HBO? They're not coming in. Now Sony and Netflix aren't doing it either. So according to, this is the San Diego Comic-Con blog. It's an official blog, which got it from Variety. Um, we're going to talk about that. They're saying that the potential strike with the WGA strike and now the SAG after, after strike uh, might have issues with guests being able to appear at San Diego Comic-Con. So they can't have people appear at the con. They can't do the panels. Uh, what's the point? And I know also it's a, probably a money-saving measure for some of these companies as well. But a lot of times they do the panels and they do like the different people in the show, actors, writers, directors, those kind of things, come up and do panels in Hall H uh, during the con about upcoming movies and TV shows and things people are excited about. Well, we might have strikes. And if we have these, these Actors Guild strikes, and if we have, because they're going to find that out on June 30th, if we're gonna, they're going to strike or not. So the Actors Guild, I think the Directors Guild, they avoided it. And now um, the writer's strike is still going on. And it's been, you know, more than a month. It's been going on two months for that. Um, why participate if you don't have anything you can do panels on because you don't have anybody to appear at the panel or they're not allowed to appear at the panel. So now uh, Netflix and Sony are also pulling out from San Diego Comic-Con, which sucks for San Diego Comic-Con because, you know, it's interesting. These people want to strike and I get why. Okay. They're good while they're striking. Even I don't agree with everything they're asking about. I get why some of the things that they're, they're questioning, I agree with. Um, Here's the thing. San Diego didn't do anything. And San Diego has given these people a platform for years. And they've actually turned the comic convention away from a comic convention and the comic creators and the indie people and all that and made it all about Hollywood. And it's a big like a celebrity petting zoo. And it's, you know, all about upcoming films. And it took the what it used to be and has already transformed as pop culture mecca. All right. And they've done this for these companies and these studios. And now the studios are going to stick it to San Diego. Uh, it's interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen, you know, in years coming up after the strikes are over, how San Diego, you know, if they're going to kiss Hollywood's ass because they've been kissing Hollywood's ass. And now because of Hollywood issues, they, they're going to be left without panels. So according to uh, Variety, it's like, can San Diego Comic-Con catch a break? For two years, the biggest annual fan convention in North America was forced to cancel the five-day gathering because of COVID, right? Um, and last year they came back and they had to be that max and vaccinated, which was weird that they did it last year, but okay. And they have Hull H panels. They did Star Trek, you know, House of the Dragon, Walking Dead, Marvel, all that. So now their Comic Con is going to start on July 19th. So we don't need, it's, yeah, it's less than a month away. And we're probably not going to have those panels. Now, I mean, if they can, if they can, um, somehow, you know, avoid a, a actor strike. They might be able to do some of the panels, but at this point in time, it sounds like, you know, these places have pulled. Um, amid the uncertainty of the strike and the people not being like the showrunners and, you know, the actors not being able to come to the event, uh, several studios have nixed their plans for San Diego. Uh, Marvel has done, nixed it. Lucasfilm aren't doing any panels. Um, so you're not going to see that Loki, you know, Haunted Mansion, Marvels, which I want the Haunted Mansion to be good. Please be good. Um, Sony Pictures isn't doing it now with Gran Turismo or Craven the Hunter. I'm not really sure how much we're missing with that one, though. Universal Pictures, The Last Voyage of Demeter, Strays, The Exorcist, they're not doing it. Netflix, 
um, just did their to Dom in Brazil, but now they're talking about their One Piece adaptation, which I'm on the fence about that one. I, I do do not trust these. I don't care if, if people are involved. I don't trust them because so far they've been dog crap. But uh, there are people expecting to look at that at San Diego. And now they're not going to be there. Now they said Warner Brothers is going to be doing there still. I thought they were pulling out. HBO was. But Blue Beetle and Aquaman Lost Kingdom have, have not ruled out skipping Comic-Con yet, but they haven't said they aren't. Uh, Max is bringing some people. I thought they were out, but apparently they're not. Paramount's still doing, um, going to be there for panels for Ninja Turtles um, and Star Trek shows. They haven't committed for that one yet, but they're not sure. NBC's going to move forward panels if there's no actor strike. So basically what's going on is until June 30th to see if they strike, these people aren't committing. So come June 30th, if these actors guilds strike, then you're going to see everybody pull. Because they're not going to be able to bring any actors to the event. They're not allowed to do so. I mean, showrunners are already pretty much out because of the, the writer strike. Now, if we have the, you know, the actors and then I think the directors are up for there too, they're going to have nobody to present, which again is a problem because these conventions have been kissing Hollywood's ass. They're basically just a mouthpiece for Hollywood. You know, that's all they've been. And we've seen them like push out like small creators or indies or the comic con people, the people that have been there for years, they keep getting relegated to smaller and smaller areas. So it can be, become more and more this big Hollywood, you know, circle jerk. And here's what's happening. Hollywood might not be able to be there or they're, even if they could be there, they're pulling their panels because, well, you know, you know, the actors can't come. So what's the point? Well, the point is, these people have, like, you know, shafted others for you, and then come next year when this is over, you're going to expect them to kiss your ass again. If I were San Diego, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to kiss your ass again. But they will. You know they will. Um, and this comes after uh, we have the E3 issues, too, because now they're saying E3 is probably dead because we talked about it the other day with uh, Neon – that since they had to cancel E3 during the pandemic, it has not come back. So they canceled 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. And we see things like Nintendo, Nintendo Direct, and the different, you know, um, like Sony and stuff doing their own events. A lot of these gaming companies are doing their own upfronts and events and things like that. And they're not needing E3. So because of that, um, it doesn't look like it's coming back anytime soon. I don't know why they didn't bring it back this year. I'm, I'm sure Neon does. I think he talked about that in another video. I wasn't here. But uh, now there's talk they might not come back for 2024 or 2025. Okay, that's the rumor. So this is coming from The Verge. And it said that um, it's been replaced by events that stream online like the Summer Game Fest, Nintendo Direct, PlayStation Showcase, Xbox Game Showcase, Ubisoft Forward. Okay, so why do they need E3? Why do they need to go there and spend the money? I mean, it is nice. It is nice to be able to go to these events and talk to people. I think actors like to go, but they're always on the stage. We've seen actors go like to, to San Diego in disguise to try to get them you know, actually go out and mingle with people. But E3, you know, having the thing of like the big actors. And it was nice to be able to, to like have people there excited about trying out games and seeing what's coming. And, you know, now you just get it on like a, big virtual presentation and that's cool but it's really not the same thing i think as it is as going there however more people get the information at the same time so it reaches a wider audience so pros and cons i guess um they said if it was a big deal that e3 has been replaced and they said it really wasn't they're saying E3 uh, attendants are showing examples of different years. Uh, there was 35,000 in 2009 with 15 million economic impact. In 2019, it was up to 66,000 at 83 million um, impact. And then it just went away. Basically, because it left, it, 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 the attendance had you know almost doubled in 10 years. And it brought a lot of, you know, economic impact to the to the area where they were doing the event um la usually so they're losing money from it um but you know hey it, it is what it is people don't want to go anymore and now there's talk that they're not going to do 2024 2025 now this is coming from gamesindustry.biz and they are saying that that's not necessarily the case 
that it's being reported that it's canceled for 2024, 2025, but it hasn't been decided yet, I guess. Um, so the uh, Los Angeles Tourism Board of Commissioners were projecting future sales results based on the cancellation of the next two, which would be 2024, 2025 of E3. But they reached out uh, and asked a spokesperson, and they said that they are currently having conversations about E3 2024 and beyond. That doesn't mean they're doing it. It doesn't mean they're not doing it. But conversations doesn't mean an E3. You know, and right now, if they're going to have conversations, they might want to make an announcement that they're going to do it if they plan on it because people are running with this. So he said, no final decisions about the event have been made at this time, but now might be the time to announce if you're actually doing one for next year so people have time to plan to get there because, you know, a lot of people can't just, you know, drop that and go. You have to, like, let them know. Um, 2023, which was done by ESA and Read Pop, was canceled back in March. Again, if you're going to do 2024, you, you, you kind of need to announce it, you know, now. They said when asked if it would return 2024, they said we're committed to providing an industry platform for marketing and convening, but we want to make sure we find that right balance that meets the needs of the industry. We're certainly going to be listening and ensuring whatever we want to offer meets those needs at, at that time. We will have more news to share. Well, I would recommend if you're going to do it, yeah, 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 decide it sooner rather than later because all people are already are thinking is I don't need to go. And honestly, at this point in time, since it's been so many years since you've actually done an event, you're not going to probably get people to come anyway. I mean, you might get a few people that really, really miss it that want to come back, but a lot of people are completely content to go sit at home and, you know, watch these other ways of learning, you know, Summer Game Fest, Nintendo Direct, PlayStation Showcase, Xbox Games Showcase, Ubisoft Forward. People are more than happy to sit at home and get to, get to watch the events live streamed on like YouTube or whatever, and they don't have to, you know, go spend money for a hotel. Now, like I said, again, you don't get to go actually, you know, be hands on and, you know, talk to people directly and, you know, have things that you have the controllers in your hand or getting to try stuff out. So between, you know, the actors, potential actor strike and, and you know, San Diego Comic-Con losing Netflix and Sony and, you know, Marvel and Lucasfilm and, you know, other, play, other groups that were coming in. I kind of swear I said HBO Max was out too, but maybe not. So between, you know, Netflix and Sony now skipping San Diego Comic-Con and them taking a hit over the potential director's actor strike and the current writer strike, you have that going on. And E3, you know, canceling this year and now it's very questionable whether we're going to have it moving forward, depends who you ask. Um, conventions are looking too hot. And now there are a lot of conventions that are doing really, really well, but I know like some of the ones around me, I don't go to anymore because they're so heavily focused on celebrities and they're spending so much money on that, that you can't, like they're pushing out all the people that are like doing comics or, you know, like I want to go to toy shows. I don't want to go to pop culture show, but now the toy show is overrun by celebrity guests. So the tickets have gone up in price. I can't even walk when I get there to even look at toys because it's overrun by people there for celebrity autographs. It's usually, I think, chaos. The one, okay, S Steel City, for example, they're doing meetups with celebrities in the hotel next door because the venue is too small and they will not go to a different venue for whatever reason. It's too crowded. I wanted to go shop for toys. I won't even go shop for toys because you can't even walk. It's so insane. Plus, they just keep raising prices on people. I know the vendors keep getting prices raised on them. And, and then some of them are, are coming back, so they're not making their money back because all they have to pay for the celebrities everybody's going and spending all their money on. I would like to see some conventions be less Hollywood and more about toys or comics or things like that. It would be a refreshing change. Anyway, please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.